some good progress in solving quadratic equations in the last two lessons. Now we're ready for some more challenging questions in today's lesson. Now do you remember the steps that we worked out for solving quadratic equations? Well, here they are. Do you remember that we had to take all the terms of the equation onto the left hand side so that the right hand side is equal to zero? We then factorize the equation, then we let each of the factors equal to zero. We use this to solve for x. Now in this lesson, we will use these steps to solve more quadratic equations. We'll also take a trip to Gold Reef City to help the land surveyors with some maps. So, by the end of this lesson, you should be able to solve quadratic equations that have one or no roots, solve a realistic problem by using a quadratic equation. If you had followed our lessons on quadratic equations so far, you might have noticed that all the quadratic equations we have worked with had two solutions. Do you remember how I showed you a parabola that had two x values when y was equal to zero? In this parabola, we had one x value when y was equal to zero. In this parabola, I showed you that the parabola does not touch the x axis, so it does not have any roots at all when y is equal to zero. Now, all the quadratic equations that we have solved so far have had two roots or x values for y equals to zero. Is it possible for quadratic equations to have one or no roots at all? Well, try out this quadratic equation and see how many roots it has. Solve for x if x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equal to 0. Now I'm going to flip this equation around to something we recognize. So we get x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equal to 0. Now to factorize this equation, I would get two brackets. We know that the x squared factorizes into x and x, which is the first term in both these brackets. Now the factors of 9 could be positive 9 times positive 1, negative 9 times negative 1, positive 3 times positive 3, or negative 3 times negative 3. Now, I'll use the middle term to help me choose the factors. I need a negative 6, so it makes sense for me to choose the factors negative 3 and negative 3. Now let's do a quick check and see whether our factors are correct. Okay, to solve this equation, I must say that x minus 3 is equal to 0 or x minus 3 is equal to 0. Hmm, can you see where this is going? Do you see that the equation is the same? So, this means that we can only have one answer for this equation and that is that x is equal to 3. Right, next example. Are you ready to work with me? Solve for x if x squared minus 2x is equal to minus 4. That sounds easy enough, doesn't it? The first thing we've got to do is to move this minus 4 onto the left hand side so that we can get the right hand side equal to 0. We get x squared minus 2x plus 4 is equal to 0. Now we factorize and we get two brackets. We know that the x squared factorizes to x and x. All that's left for us to do is fill in the numbers here, which are the factors of positive 4. Now the possible factors of positive 4 is positive 4 times positive 1, negative 4 times negative 1, positive 2 times positive 2, or negative 2 times negative 2. Now if we take positive 4 times positive 1, and if we add those factors, it gives us positive 5x, which is not the middle term, so we can't use that. 
If we take negative 4 times negative 1, that will give us negative 5x. So that's also not true. Let's try negative 2 times negative 2. That gives me negative 4. Still, we're not getting negative 2. What about the last set of factors? Positive 2 and positive 2. That gives us positive 4x. So you see, it seems we have a problem. Can you find any solutions? This trinomial can't be factorized. But that means that we can't make two brackets multiply to give us zero. Are we stuck or are we missing something? This trinomial cannot be factorized because there are no roots or solutions to the equation. Does this mean that the whole equation is nonsense? But that doesn't make any sense. Why would we give you an equation that cannot be factorized? Well, let's see if there's a parabola that is described by y equals x squared minus 2x plus 4. Yes, there is. Here is the graph. Can you see that the graph doesn't cut the x-axis at all? In other words, it does not cut the line y equals to 0 at all. So we can have no roots, which are your x values, when y equals to 0 for this graph. But the graph certainly exists. Now you can see that it is possible to have one or no roots as an answer to a quadratic equation. I'm going to present you with a realistic situation where quadratic equations will help you. Gold Reef City plans to put in another ride called Devil's Dare in their amusement park. This one will have more twists and loops than the Anaconda. They need to know how much space they will need for this new ride. They know that the length of the Devil's Dare is three times its width. They have been told to add an extra length of 30 meters to the front end of the length as a safety measure. Now the manufacturers of the ride claim that it needs a rectangular area of 3,600 meters squared. Use this information to work out what the length and the width of the area is needed. But first, we need to work out where we can build it. So let's sort out what we have and what we're trying to find. It always helps to use x for something. Shall we let the width be x meters? And we write that here. Great start. Now let's look at the length. We know that the length here is 3 times the width. So this means that this portion is 3x. We also know that 30 meters was added to the length. So this means the total length is 3x plus the 30 meters. So we know that length is represented by 3x plus 30 and that the width is represented by x. We also know that the area of a rectangle is the length times the breadth or width. So let's write that. Area is equal to the length multiplied by the breadth. Now let's write the information that we have. We know that the area is 3,600 meters squared. So let's write that. We know that the length is 3x plus the extra 30 meters. Write that here. And we know that the breadth or width is x. Well, this looks like a quadratic equation to me. What do you think? Just remember that we must get a zero on the one side at some stage. Otherwise, we can't solve this equation. So we can rewrite the equation as the width, which is x, multiplied by the length, which is 3x plus 30, is equal to the area, which is 3,600 square meters. Now, do you see that there is a common factor of 3? What we will do is remove the common factor simply because it makes our working much easier. So if I leave the 3 out here, now, 3 times what gives me 3x three squared? I've got to write x squared in here. 3 times what gives me positive 30x? That is positive 10x. 3 times what gives me negative 3600? And that is negative 1,200. 
is equal to 0. Now, basically what's happened is if I multiply this 3 into this bracket, it must take me back to this line here. Let's check before we go on. 3 times x squared is 3x squared. 3 times positive 10x is positive 30x. 3 times negative 1,200 gives me negative 3,600. So all we've done is removed a common factor. Now, the easy bits. We divide both sides by 3. The 3 cancels off here and we get 1. So our equation now becomes x squared plus 10x minus 1,200 is equal to 0 divided by any number is still 0. So this is now the equation we work with. Do you see that it is simpler to work with? So our simplified quadratic equation is x squared plus 10x minus 1,200 is equal to 0. And our quadratic equation factorizes to two brackets, which is equal to 0. And our factors are x and x. Now we need to find factors of 1,200 or negative 1,200. I know 40 and 30 are factors of 1,200. And I know that I need to get a positive 10 in the middle. So let's say positive 40 is the first factor and negative 30 is the next factor. Let's check quickly before we go any further. x times x gives me x squared. x times negative 30 is negative 30x, plus 40x gives me positive 10x. So hey, these factors seem to be correct. And lastly, positive 40 times negative 30 is negative 1,200. So our factors are indeed correct. Now, we can write x plus 40 is equal to 0, or x minus 30 is equal to 0. And this simplifies to x equals to negative 40 or that x equals to 30. There's no way that x can be negative 40. x stands for the breadth of our rectangle and that value cannot be negative. This means that x can only be equal to 30. Now, the width is therefore 30 meters. We know that the length was calculated by 3x plus 30. We know that x is 30 meters, so this gives us 3 times 30 plus the extra 30 meters, and that gives us a total of 120 meters. Let's check our answers. We'll do the check working out here. We know that length is multiplied by the breadth. We know that the length is 120 meters, so we write that here. Multiplied by the breadth or width, which is 30 meters. And that gives us a total of 3,600 square meters. Let's now recap what we have learned. We solved quadratic equations that had one or no roots. We solved a problem that involved area, length and width by solving a quadratic equation. Here is your task to do at home. Solve for x in each of the following quadratic equations. Number 1. x minus 4 squared is equal to 0. Number 2. x minus 7 multiplied by x minus 5 is equal to 3. Number 3, x squared plus 3x is equal to 8. Take care, and until next time, Salani.